In this subunit, we'll take a look at fractals that are generated by a random process as opposed to a deterministic process. So thus far, we've been looking at deterministic processes where, for our friend the Koch curve, a line is replaced with a bent line. And this rule is deterministic. because there's no element of chance in it. There's no randomness or stochasticity. <coughs> the starting shape um, and this rule completely determine what happens next. So we take this shape, replace, take this line, replace it with a bent line. Take those lines, replace them with the bent lines. Or if we're making a Sierpinski triangle, we take a triangle, cut the middle triangle out of it. Take those triangles, cut the middle triangle out of them. <coughs> So those are deterministic rules. There's no element of chance or choice. In the last subunit, we um, made these rules a little bit irregular. We tried making, uh, adding some asymmetry and trying different shapes here, but it was still a deterministic process. It will unfold the same way every time. We're going to change that now. And we'll do so first as follows. So now we're going to imagine we have a line segment, but there are two possible rules. Sometimes we replace the line segment with a bent one like this. Other times we go down. So this, I would say, is a random rule. It's also sometimes called stochastic. And so now, we're still going to iterate the rule, but the rule has an element of chance in it. So we're going to start with this line, and uh, I'll flip a coin, and I'll either replace it with a bent line up or a bent line down. Then I'll have four little lines, and I'll flip four more coins to figure out, do I replace it with a bent line up or a bent line down? So and I would flip a separate coin for each step. So let's um, try that out by hand so you kind of get a feel for how this works, and then I'll show you what happens when we have a computer make some of these shapes for us. So let's give this a try and see what happens. So the rule is I'm going to consider each line segment. I'm going to toss a coin. If it's heads, I'll make a bump up. If it's tails, I'll make the bump down. So this is n equals zero, my starting point. Here's the coin that I'm going to toss. It's a US quarter, uh, so there's heads, there's tails. I, I was worried that the head and tail wouldn't show up on the camera, so I took my Sharpie and wrote on the quarter, which hopefully isn't a violation of any laws. Okay, so here's the first shape. We're going to go up or down. Let's see. So I'm going to toss this, and I get H for heads. So I'm going to replace this with a bump that goes up. Okay. So let's see, that's n equals 1. Here is n equals 0. Now I've got four segments, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to need to toss a coin for each of those. So here we go. That's tails. So that goes down. Let's see, I'll do orange for this one. Down. OK, what's next? Toss the coin tails again. So that this means this one's going to go down. That's in. Already the scale for this is off a little bit. I'll toss the coin. And I got heads. And let's see, one more toss. And that was tails. So this is going to go down. All right, there's n equals 2. And we iterate this rule, flipping more coins. Now I have 1, 2, 3, 4 times 4, 16 line segments. So I'll need to toss the coin 16 times. Every time, if it's heads, I'll make a bump up. If it's tails, I'll make a bump down. So there's tails. So that means I go down.
Okay, so that took a little while, but now I have step n equals 3. And uh, I messed this one up here a little bit, but um, you can start to see that this is taking on some pretty kind of jagged shape. It's definitely um, doesn't look that much like the original hook curve, although one can see a little bit of a resemblance. So um, in order to get a better sense of what these look like, we'll turn to a computer. So I wrote a computer program a while ago that will do this process for me and it will produce random Coke curves. So let's see, let me, um, just for reference, put this back. And here is what um, some of them might look like. So this is what, um, this is one particular instance. And every time I run the program, I get a different curve. There's more, so a whole bunch of them. So I think this is pretty neat. This is still a very simple rule. It just added a little bit of randomness. And all of a sudden, I'm getting things that look really a lot, I think, like an actual coastline or something that we might sort of see in, in nature in some place, a jagged crack or a fracture. Um, so I uh, had a little fun. I got carried away, made a whole bunch of them. Um, <clears throat> but again, they always kind of turn out differently. Sometimes they have these little bulbs here. Um, or maybe you could almost picture that as a lake. But um, a little bit of randomness, and we get these really neat looking fractals that now I think start to look really pretty similar to, um, or much more similar to um, real objects out in the world, uh, much, much more so than this. To be honest, this shape starts to get a little boring to me. Wouldn't surprise me if it's gotten boring to you. But these shapes, um, I think, are much more interesting and, and much more fun because they're much more realistic. One can uh, vary an experiment further. So um, in what I just showed you, the rule was 50-50. Uh, let's see. In the next one, I made it so that 80% of the time we go up and only 20% you go down. And here's two examples from that. So you can see most of the bumps are going upward now, but there still are some downward ones. This one looks a little bit too regular to me, uh, too much like the, the pure, the, the unrandom one. But this one um, uh, I like. Looks, it looks a little bit like the coast of Maine, where, where I live. Another thing one could do is change this angle. So right now this angle is 60 degrees. We could make it so that this angle is steeper. And I did one of those uh, I think with an 85 degree angle, <clears throat> and I get something that's not surprisingly even spikier. This maybe looks a little less realistic, at least for a coastline, because it wiggles over itself. But nevertheless, it's a, a pretty interesting shape. So, um, the uh, moral of the story is that we can use a deterministic rule to make a very regular looking fractal. We can use a simple random or stochastic rule that has an element of chance. We flip a coin in order to see which way it goes. And very easily, we can generate shapes that look very similar to uh, geological structures. Now, of course, um, geomorphology is probably a little bit more complicated than this. It's not a matter of simple, simply making bends and going up and down. But one could imagine how uh, random processes of fracture or breaking splitting, dividing, or something um, could produce a coastline that looks like this. So certainly not a realistic mechanis mechanistic model, but it suggests to me that very simple processes can produce, um, again, intricate and also irregular shapes.